Hi guys and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. Now today we're going to be doing this amazing, cute, 3D Winnie the Pooh cake ready for your influx of cake orders in August when the new Christopher Robbins film is released. You will find more Winnie the Pooh tutorials on my channel. Remember guys, if you like what you see, please do support the channel by subscribing. Share this tutorial with your friends. Give it a go. Hobby baker, professional or not, it does not matter. I take you through everything step by step and I can't encourage you all enough. Happy baking guys and thank you all for your continued support. Give it a go and let's make a start. For Winnie the Pooh's body, I have two half ball cakes. These are exactly eight inch. It is a Victoria sponge and I will leave a link to the recipe in the description below this video. I also have my delicious buttercream and sharp knife, some Hartley's jam and a bowl just for the excess mess. What you want to start by doing is cutting off the top of the ball shape so it lies flat onto the baking parchment. Now it is laid flat on your work surface using your sharp knife trim off the top of the cake. Taking some buttercream, start by adding a thin layer to the top of the cake. This will just help stop all of the jam oozing through it. Now we need to create a dam. So simply by piping the buttercream, go around the outside of your cake and then completely fill this with jam. Taking your buttercream again, simply pipe over the top of the jam centre and then with a knife, smooth it out. You then want to place this cake in the fridge for about 30 minutes just to let all of this filling set slightly before we add the second layer of cake. Now you want to take the other half ball cake and simply place this directly onto all of that lovely filling which will be lovely and hard because you've left it in the fridge. Taking a sharp knife we're now going to trim off some cake off the top. Here I have a four inch round cake card. That's the amount you need to trim so if you just trim a little bit at a time keep placing the cake card back on there until you have trimmed enough away so that cake card fits perfectly on the top of your eight inch round ball cake. Now we need to crumb coat the entire cake. Simply taking some of your buttercream with a palette knife, all this involves is covering all of that ball cake and it will just give a fondant something to adhere to later. Once you have covered all of the cake, place this back in the fridge for about 30 minutes. For Winnie the Pooh's legs, we're going to be using Rice Krispie Treats. You're going to need 150 gram of Rice Krispies, 300 gram of marshmallows and some butter placed in the pan. We're going to be melting the marshmallows in this pan over a very low heat so they don't burn. So this is what you will end up with. All I've done is place the marshmallows in the pan. The butter helps to stop them from burning and melt them down. Simply pour in your Rice Krispies and give them a really good stir. You now have your own homemade Rice Krispie treats. In order to make the legs, I'm going to start by greasing my hands with a little bit of butter. Now, if you're not used to working with Rice Krispie Treats, whilst they're still warm, they're lovely and pliable, but extremely sticky. All I'm going to do here is make two balls, roughly the same size, and then you can watch me whilst they're on that piece of baking parchment at the base of the cake that I've just taken out of the fridge, shape them into Winnie the Pooh's legs. It's very simple, 
you shape them how you want to. Take your time. The older they get, the easier they are to work with. Here you can see they are extremely sticky. But just start off with two very simple ball shapes. Now that I have created my two relatively large ball shapes, I'm simply using my hands, as you can see, to manipulate the Rice Krispie Treats into the foot shape. When these Rice Krispie Treats are completely cool, especially after they've been in the fridge, they will be rock hard and they will not be able to be manipulated again. So don't worry about them losing their shape when we cover the cake with fondant. This is what you want to end up with and just keep on manipulating them until you're happy with your bear's feet. We now need to cover the feet, just like we did the body. So we're just going to crumb coat them. Taking your leftover buttercream and a small knife, take your time and completely cover both of the legs with a lovely thick layer of buttercream. The next step is to cover Winnie the Pooh's body. So I've got 1.5 kilograms of Renshaw's yellow fondant, a sharp knife, a very large rolling pin, spacers. Now these, this will just mean that I can roll it exactly five millimeters thick. I've got a normal smoother, but I've also got the new cake smoothies. Perfect for 3D cakes by Squire's Kitchen and some icing sugar. So I have rolled out my 1.5 kilogram of yellow fondant in between my five millimeter spaces. The best way to apply this to your cake is using the rolling pin. Simply place the fondant over the rolling pin and then you want to gently place this over the cake. We're then going to start slowly negotiating the pleats. I know this is the part most cake decorators dread, but I promise you, with a lot of practice, do not let the fondant get the better of you. Be one with your fondant and you will get the hang of it. Trust me, you know what you're doing. You're the baker. Make the fondant do as it's told. <laughs> You now want to take your normal cake smooth. Now, if you just go around the edge edges of your cake, you'll find it very, very easily then to be able to cut away all of that excess fondant. Once you've cut away all of the excess fondant, taking the cake smoothies, simply take your time smoothing out that cake and making it absolutely flawless. This is what it will look like when you've just taken your time. You've used the cake smoothies as well if you have some. If you don't, I would suggest getting some. They're a fantastic investment. But we now need to add our internal support. Here I have a four inch round cake card where I've drilled a hole. This is a very large poly dowel. As you can see, I've just cut it down so some goes straight through the head to stop it falling off. We have some normal wooden cake dowels and they also have a pipe cutter on the table. Now what you want to start off with is just take your cake card, place it directly on top of the cake and then place your poly dowel straight through the centre. That way you know where to place your cake card. Take the cake card away. And now you need to add some more internal supports so that the head, the weight of the head, does not push through the cake. For this, you're going to use four cake dowels. Now, if you're not used to using cake dowels, it's very easy. You just place it into the cake and take a non-toxic pencil. I tend to use my fingers on the base and just mark a line where to cut it. Now to cut this, I'm using a regular pipe cutter that you can buy from any DIY store. However, it's only ever been used on my wooden cake dowels. 
very, very easy to cut if you use one of these. So much easier than when I first started and tried all sorts of different methods. You simply place it directly into the pipe cutter, tighten it up slightly, and then start turning the pipe cutter around you down. Keep on tightening it up as you're turning it, and it will cut through beautifully. You want to repeat this three more times so that in total you have four cake dowels in the top of that cake. Taking a new batch of buttercream, simply place this on top of the four cake dowels that you have just placed in there. And then on top of this, this will act like a glue, place your four inch round cake card directly through the poly dowel and push down onto the top of your cake. Taking a six inch half ball cake, you now want to repeat what you did with the eight inch. You're going to cut off roughly a four inch round circle from the dome just so that it lays flat on the top of your eight inch round cake. Then just like we did with the base cake, trim off the top so all that lovely delicious cake is exposed. Add some buttercream to the cake card so that this can act like a glue and simply place on the base of your six inch half ball cake. Just gently feed it through and down through the poly dowel. Taking your buttercream, you now want to just have a layer of buttercream directly on top of that cake. And then we're going to create another dam and just completely fill it with more jam. Again, just like we did before, taking your buttercream, now go over the top of the jam and seal it all in there and then just smooth it out with a knife. After the cake has been left in the fridge for about 30 minutes again, you want to add the final part of the dome and just place this directly over the poly dowel. The reason I keep on putting the cake in the fridge is so that those fillings go lovely and hard, especially when it's warm weather. If you don't do this, because I like to add a lot of fillings, they will start to ooze out. Now I want to do a little bit of cake carving, but not much. Using a sharp knife, we're going to start cutting away where Winnie the Pooh's eyes are going to be. Take your time with this. If you cut away too much cake at once, it's very difficult to glue it all back on. You just want to cut a little bit away at a time. It will not look like Winnie the Pooh whilst it's in this state. You'll be surprised what a few decorations can do afterwards. So just keep carving away and just make two indentations, one for each of Winnie the Pooh's eyes. Make sure you avoid where the nose will be going and the mouth. We want those parts to stick out. Once you have finished with the carving with your leftover buttercream, you now want to crumb coat the top cake. Completely cover it just like we did the base cake and then again place this back into the fridge. And this is what he will look like once he's completely crumb coated. Our next job is to cover the head. So here I have 750 gram of Renshaw's yellow fondant and the tools that I used previously, including the spacers, the rolling pin, the cake smoothies and some icing sugar. Also a very sharp knife. So here I have rolled out the 750 gram of Renshaw's yellow fondant. Again, I'm going to pick it up using my rolling pin and place it directly onto the head. Now you will have to be slightly faster with this one than you did with the base. The weight of the fondant can actually pull down and rip. Gravity is against you with this one. 
So what I find is best to do, if you really rub it against the cake, it will adhere to that buttercream. And that can act like a natural glue, but you have to be relatively fast still. Go around all of the cake, negotiating the pleats, and then use your cake smoothies if you have them, just to make it extra smooth. Using your sharp knife, once you've got it all adhered there, just around the neck, cut away all of the excess fondant. Once the fondant is on there and you've cut away any excess, you don't have to worry about it, it ripping anymore. So if you just sit down and take your time using those smoothies, you want to smooth out all around the neck, just tidy everything up that you've just done, smooth all of the head out because as you can see you can see all those bits of buttercream poking through it's not very smooth at all yet and just take your time getting him as smooth as you can before the fondant on the head actually starts to set we're going to add a mouth for this i'm just going to use a very simple circle so you want him quite central to you. I can't have him facing the camera because I need to see exactly what I'm doing. And if you just place the circle cutter in there gently, you will get a lovely smiling mouth shape. You can then use your Dresden tool or a cocktail stick to add just a little bit more definition. Here, what I am doing is placing the circle tool just underneath as a guide again, just to make his mouth that little bit bigger. And then I will use the Dresden tool to push the fondant in more. You're also wanting to use the Dresden tool on either side of the mouth, just for a couple of lines, just to make him look like he's smiling. Take your time with this and the eyes because it's very important and it will make him look like Winnie the Pooh. You'll be surprised what a few simple features can do to a cake and how easy it is to ruin the cake. And this is the sort of look that you're aiming to achieve. Now we're going to be adding the nose, the eyes and both eyebrows. For this, I'm using Renshaw's Jet Black Fondant. I have some edible glue and a brush. For the nose, start by taking some Jet Black Fondant and roll it into a ball. Using your work surface, you then want to make the end more pointy, so it's a bit more like a triangle and really soft at the top. Once you get the shape that you want, just apply it to the cake and check that it's the right size. Once you have the correct size and shape, that's what you're looking for, using some edible glue, just stick it directly to the cake. For the eyes, we're just going to be using two very small ball shapes. If you just roll them out first, two black balls, Place them into the indentations where we carved away the cake and then add some edible glue to make sure they adhere to the cake and stick there. The next thing we want to do now are the eyebrows. So all we're going to do again is start off with very simple shapes. Roll a sausage shape, but at one end you want it thinner than the other. Repeat this with both pieces of fondant so that they are even before you apply them to the cake. And this is what you are aiming to achieve. He's almost finished. This is really simple. Now, what we're going to add are we need the Pooh's ears. So taking some leftover yellow fondant, just start with two basic bowl shapes. And you are literally just going to see me using my thumbs to push into the centre and then I am going to gently place these on the top of the cake, shape them with my fingers and stick them on with a small amount of edible glue. Now it's time to add Winnie the Pooh's little red 
coat. For the coat, I'm using Renshaw's Poppy Red Fondant, Tylo powder, and you will need one level teaspoon as we're going to need to turn this into modeling paste. Taking your packet of Poppy Red Fondant, simply add some Tylo powder and knead this in. By doing this, you will be creating your own modeling paste. Place what you are not using into a bag as it will set, but it will be more pliable in order for us to do the coat on Winnie the Pooh's body. Once you have your modeling paste, take half of it and start by rolling this into a sausage shape. We are going to be using very simple shapes in order to create the coat and it's all going to be cut away freehand. So just make this a little bit more pliable with your hands and then the sausage shape wants to be long enough to cover half of Winnie the Pooh. So if you just roll it out, take your cake and then just see if it fits, that's about right. Taking some icing sugar, place this on your work surface and then roll out your modelling paste. Once you have rolled out your modelling paste, just taking a sharp knife, trim off the ends. You can create a basic shape with this modelling paste before we place it onto the cake. So you want two straight sides and a slightly curved one because his, his t-shirt is going to be slightly curved as it's going round his tummy. So if you do this with your knife first, you will actually find that when you place it on the cake, it will be an awful lot easier. Because it's red on yellow, if you go wrong, it can be very difficult to rectify. So I'm going to advise that you apply your edible glue just below the neckline, just a small amount. And then you want one line down each side. Remember how I said it's just going to be covering half. Forget the middle. Forget the centre for now. You just need something so it has something to adhere to when you actually apply it to the cake. You're then literally just going to pick this up with your hands. It's more pliable. It's modelling paste, remember. Place it slightly higher so it wraps around the neck. This can be the collar because we can bend it down in a bit. Use your fingers to make sure it's stuck to all of that lovely glue and then just trim away any excess. You now want to repeat that process, but for the back of the cake instead. All we need to add now are Winnie the Pooh's arms. The arms are really simple. You can see I've already added this on one side and all it is is the leftover modelling paste. It covers up the seam, so that's another good thing. And all you want to do is start by creating more of a triangular shape, push it down and you want it the same depth as Winnie the Pooh's top. Once you have done this, just stick it on there with some edible glue and manipulate it whilst it's on the cake. In order to add Winnie the Pooh's arms, we're going to use two simple sausage shapes and apply them to Winnie the Pooh using some edible glue. Simply repeat this for the other arm. You'll notice I placed one indentation in there. I used that using my knife and also a Dresden tool. It just give it, gives it a little bit more of an effect. So just do this with the other arm, but again, it's just such a simple shape. And here he is, guys, your completed Winnie the Pooh cake. Kept very simple, everything you need to know step by step. Remember, if you like what you see, please do support the channel by subscribing. Share it with your friends, and I will be back soon with an awful lot more new free content. Happy baking guys and give it a go.